Praise the Lord. We rise up as we pray together. Thank you very much. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bless your name today for the Bible study. Thank you, Lord, because we know you are here already with us, because you said, what you or three are gathered together, in your name you are there in their midst. And we are resting assured tonight that you are here to teach us your word. We pray you open the pages of scriptures to every one of us in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, that what we study today will be of tremendous benefit to every one of us at this study in Jesus' name. For all our brothers and sisters, members of the body of Christ in this church and other churches, who are together with us through satellite, oh Lord, we pray as we are blessing your people here, you bless everyone there in Jesus' name. Transform our lives. Help us to live with purpose. Help us, Lord, to live with the future in mind. And you know that what we do today will contribute tremendously to what we are going to be tomorrow. Bless your people tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. You can see now we're back to Matthew chapter 6. Tonight we're looking at Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. Please open your Bible with me as we study together tonight. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. As we come to this last verse of chapter 6, you will know that this is the conclusion of this section from verse 25 all through to verse 34. And you will see that the Lord is still talking about take no thought. Which means don't be anxious and don't be worried. But you will see the preciology. That is the way he said everything here in verse 24. A little bit different from what he had said before. Look at verse 25. Therefore I say unto you. Take no thought for your life. He is talking about your life. In verse 34, take no thought about tomorrow. And then in verse 25, well, what shall we eat? Or what you shall drink? Or, or for your body? Nor yet for your body what you shall put on. He tells us in verse 24, Do not take thought, do not be anxious or worried about your life, about what you will eat, about what you will drink, about what you will put on. In verse 34, take therefore no thought for the morrow. It's not talking about time, about days, about years, about the present and the future. As you look at verse 30, wherefore, if God so close the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more close you, ye of little face? Over there is sin. Don't say thought about dressing, appearance, about your apparel, about what you put on, about your clothing. And then it says in verse 31, therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or where with us shall we be clothed? And then it goes on and on. But in verse 34, particularly about today and tomorrow. And he's telling us a secret, a great secret of how to live, so that you will not be worried or anxious. He's saying to break the worry habit, live one day at a time. Live one day at a time. That's what he's saying. Live one moment at a time. Don't be anxious about what's going to come next. What's going to come the following day. What's going to come the following week or the following month. Don't get so anxious and worried about what's going to come next. Live your life to the full at this very moment. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the sin of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. I'm sure you've heard this song before. Here is how somebody captured what Jesus said in his song. He said, I'm only human. I'm just a man. Lord, help me believe in what I could be and in what all that I am. 
And then he said, just show me the stairway that I have to climb. Lord, for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. Teach me. I want to learn the lesson. How I can take one day at a time, one moment at a time, and never be anxious or worried about what's coming next. One day at a time, Lord Jesus, that's all I'm asking from you. Just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. That's all we need. Don't worry about about the assignment of tomorrow, the duty of tomorrow, the responsibility of tomorrow. All I'm asking for, just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday is gone, Lord Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today, just today, just today. Help me today. Day, he says, show me the way, one day at a time. Let's come back to that verse 34. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. I battled with that verse about, you know, 40 years ago. I didn't understand, I was just a new Christian and I had a few years in Christ. And then it says, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And I was wondering, how could Jesus say that? Because he just taught us in this same chapter, deliver us from evil. And then he now says, for sufficient unto this day, unto the day is the evil thereof. As I grew in my Christian life and study of the Bible, I now realize that that word evil it's used in different, different ways. You know, sometimes the events of the day, the assignments of the day, the pressures of the day, the problems of the day, the challenges of the day, the trouble of the day, the trial, the trauma of the day. That's the evil of the day. And look at Genesis chapter 47. In Genesis chapter 47, I'm looking at verses 8 and 9. The word evil. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Here we're told that Pharaoh was talking to Jacob in Genesis chapter 47, verse 8. And Pharaoh said unto Jacob, How old art thou? And Jacob said unto Pharaoh, The days of the years of my pilgrimage are an hundred and thirty years. Few and evil are the days of my years, of the years of my life being few and evil. It's not talking about sin. Few and evil are the years, the days of the years of my life being. What did he mean by that? He was thinking about the trouble he had with Esau. Few and evil, the fear he had, the oppression he had in the mind, the anxiety he had in the mind. It was thinking about all the trouble he went through in the house of Laban. How he changed his wages. It's not talking about sin. Few and evil are the days of the year of my life being, and have not attained unto the days of the years of the life of my fathers in the days of their pilgrimage. By the way, all those evil things, the pressure, the problem, the perplexities, the trouble, the trial, and all the things he went through. The Lord delivered him. Look at chapter 48. Chapter 48 of Genesis. I'm reading from verse 15. And he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my father Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day. The angel which redeemed me from all evil. Bless the lads. Here it says, in all those evils I spoke about, I'm just talking about the trouble I went through. The trials and temptations I went through. The pressures and the persecutions I went through. And yet it said, God delivered me from all those evil things. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 1 and verse 2. Sufficient unto the day. Is the evil thereof. Now you understand. Sufficient unto the day is the problem thereof. The perplexities thereof. The trials thereof. The troubles and the temptations thereof. Each day has its challenge. And just deal with the challenges of today. 
of this moment that's all you need ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 1 cast thy bread upon the waters for thou shalt find it after many days give a portion to seven and also to eight for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. What's he talking about? He's talking about the possibility of scarcity and famine. The possibility of drought. He said, give today so that it can be given to you tomorrow. Make today your planting time. Sow the seed in the lives of other people. Who knows what's going to come tomorrow? When the evil of scarcity and need come tomorrow, then what you have sown today will come back to you. That's why it says, cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Sow it today, give it today, dispose of it today, and then after many days, when the evil days come, and the days of scarcity and need when they come, then all those sins will come back to you. But whatever those challenges are, I'm sure you know God is going to deliver you from them. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 18. 2 Timothy chapter 4. And here we're looking at verse 18. There you will see what Paul the Apostle was uh, talking about uh, we were chasing around this word evil and uh, so you will know it is not just it's not talking about sin and the lord shall deliver me from every evil work and preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to him be glory forever and ever and everybody said amen let's come back now to matthew chapter 6 now you understand what the lord was talking about when he said Take therefore no thought for the morrow. Then he says, For tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day, unto this day, is the evil thereof. The great secret of living a happy, healthy, holy, fruitful life is living without worry about the past and without anxiety concerning the future. The past is gone. Forget it. The future is yet unborn. Don't think about it. Think about today. That's all you have. The true child of God settles the past with God. He has confessed the sins of the past. And he has been forgiven. Now he shuts out the past and counts everything belonging to the past as dead and buried and never to rise again. Locking the past behind an iron door. He throws the key of remembrance away. You don't want to remember all the troubles of yesterday. You don't want to remember all the trials of yesterday. You don't want to remember all that you went through yesterday. It's gone. And because it's gone, lock the door against it and throw the key away. I don't even remember. The future is yet unborn. So the child of God leaves that with God until it comes this is how they tell us in our you know local language don't cross the bridge before you get there get, get other things done when you get to the bridge you'll cross it but don't try to cross the bridge before you get there it's, it's that's the future and because it's not here yet leave it in the hands of god leaving the past and the future with god you summon all the grace you have received all the strength and the courage you have to face the challenges of this day. We're going to divide the study to three parts. Number one, leave tomorrow with God and his good foresight. That's what the Lord is saying. Don't touch it. Don't think about it. Leave tomorrow with God. Leave it in his good foresight. Number two, labor today. Today is all you have. Today is what you are sure about. Labor today with God's guidance and great faith. Number three, let today be the gateway to a glorious future. Let today, that's the best thing you can do by today, for today. That's the best thing you can do and make this day a stepping stone, a, a gateway to what's going to come in the future. Let's come to point number one, living tomorrow. It with God and his good foresight. We're looking at Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. 
Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. Here it says, Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Very simply, that's, that's the Lord telling us, Leave tomorrow alone. Get busy about today and get concerned about the challenges and the trials and the problems you have today and get the problems of today solved. If you ever get anybody that is, you know, you have anybody worrying and getting anxious and almost crying and mourning, having a gloomy face, and you ask them, what's the problem? Have you eaten today? Yes, I've eaten today. I'm wondering what I'm going to eat tomorrow. Do you have a job today? Yes, I have something doing today. I'm just wondering and worrying about what's going to happen to me tomorrow. Live tomorrow with God and with God's good foresight. Let's look at Psalm 127 verse 1 and verse 2. Psalm 127. We're looking at verses 1 and 2. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, and to eat the bread of sorrows, for he giveth his beloved sleep. When you've had a good day's work, and now you are tired, you, know, you need to sleep, go to bed, go to sleep. And I but tomorrow, well, you'll wake up tomorrow, and then it, tomorrow will become today. And then you'll begin to address the problems and the challenges of that day. And leave everything in the hands of the Lord. Don't worry about tomorrow. That's what Jesus said. Get concerned and get busy about the assignment, the duty, the responsibility that you have today. In James chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 13. James chapter 4, verse 13. Here it says, Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. And you see, it is nothing wrong with planning, but when you put everything in the future and you're so concerned about the future, and you're so worried and anxious about the future, what's going to happen next? Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanishes away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Hinge everything upon the Lord's foresight. Upon his goodness, upon his power, upon the promises he has given us, hinge everything upon the power, the might of the Lord, and say, if God wills, if this is his plan, this we will do, or that we will do. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12. Acts, chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 5. As we read this, I want you to put yourself in the shoes of the person we're reading about. And ask yourself, how would you act? How would you feel? How will you think? What will you do if you're in the situation of a man like this? Acts of the Apostles chapter 12 verse 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison. 